SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Captain Ginyu was released in Japan on the 18th of July, the sixth official release in this year. Ginyu is an over-the-counter release and retails for about 7,000 yen or roughly 65 US dollars. International online retailers are starting to ship, but the US will have them in store sometime next month. Many younger fans or Dragon Ball Super exclusive fans may not know too much about Captain Ginyu and the Ginyu Force, though he did make a return in the Resurrection of F movie. Ginyu may not hold too much sentimental value with newer viewers or collectors of the series. Nevertheless, Ginyu has a strong fan base amongst Dragon Ball Z fans, not only in Japan, but around the world. His eccentric personality and love for theatrics has a deep root in Japanese culture and draws many inspirations from traditional kabuki stage performances, parodies of Japanese popular Super Sentai, and design cues from Japanese mythological demons, Oni. To say the least, Captain Ginyu is definitely a unique character and is an excellent example of diversity in the Dragon Ball series. He brings comedic relief not only in his persona, but of course, what he is most associated with, flashy poses. What figure arts have done with this figure is fantastic. The engineering, the sculpt, the proportions of the figure just embodies the character so well. It's like the figure was tailored to this character. Sure, each figure we've gotten so far technically is unique to the character, with the exception of Goku being used for multiple versions of Goku and to some degree other fused characters or characters with similar body types. I assume Tamashi would design the figure in 3D, put X amount of points of articulation in the required spots, you know, standard figure art stuff, and then after production, hope the figure can pull off the poses needed for marketing. With Ginyu, it feels like they've done it in reverse. We need Ginyu to strike this particular pose, so we have to figure out a way to engineer in better ab crunch. Ginyu needs to be big and imposing, but his posture is a little different. He has a wider chest, his muscles are a little different to the other characters, his shoulders are a little bit broader. I really feel that they've put a lot of time and consideration when designing this figure. What I like about this figure is that they've used a combination of matte and shiny plastics. All of Ginyu's exposed body parts has a nice matte finish, except for the joints uh, with his elbows, knees, and upper thighs. These joints use a different plastic. I assume uh, that they're slightly more flexible, like PVC, hence the shininess. The black areas of his armor are a little glossy as they are painted over white plastic Ginyu's trunks also have a glossy sheen to them, which I think they should have been matte. Uh, the wrists and the ankle guards are also slightly shiny too. However, they have complemented this with a matte finish on his shoulder pads and waist pads. There isn't a lot of paintwork going on, something I think this figure could have benefited from, as the sculpt work on this body is exceptional, especially in the head sculpt. A little shading, would have gone a long way in bringing out those little details and add a little bit more depth to what in some photos just looks like a sea of flat purple. Nevertheless, once you have him in hand, you can clearly see all the exceptional sculpted details. I like the size and the heft to this figure. It reminds me of Nappa, a very underrated figure in my opinion. I was talking about proportions earlier on. Ginyu looks strong, he's got this kind of boxer type physique, muscular, a little stocky, you know, when paired up with Goku, but he looks menacing. I think that's what Figure Arts did a little bit better, in my opinion, when compared to Demonical Fit. DF, you know, while a solid attempt, just looks too generic to me. It's a little too lanky, doesn't seem to have, you know, the right amount of depth and proportional balance like figure arts. Once again, I really have to commend Tamashi on the engineering of this figure. It's just so well articulated and because of that, the figure is really expressive, if not one of the most expressive figures uh, in the line. Looking first at the head articulation, the head does move side to side. 
no problems. And it does have some fantastic tilt side to side right there, left and right. The head does move way all the way up. And the uh, neck joint here, which is on a ball peg, uh, does help as well. So you can get him in a, you know, a parallel flying pose. I'm sure some of you uh, who watched the series remember that Ginyu does fly this way. Uh, he does bury his head really deep into his chest. Look at that. Fantastic. Again, you know, you do get some gaps in between the head and the neck. Um, but still, you can get him in some really crazy positions with his head and neck there. Moving on to the shoulders, as I mentioned earlier, the shoulder pads and the side skirt pads here, they are uh, detachable, so they're not permanently uh, fixed onto the shoulders and onto uh, his, onto Ginyu's armor. And, you know, they've done this in a way um, so you don't actually break it. Uh, I was actually, you know, a little bit annoyed, a little bit frustrated in the beginning when I was fiddling around with this guy. It kept on popping up every time I, you know, try to move the shoulder, every time I try to move out the leg. But I understand why they did it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty rough with my figures, I gotta say. I should take more care, uh, you know, when handling my figures. But, you know, when I was moving the arms around, when I, you know, just went a little bit too far, the shoulders would pop off. And if they didn't, I would probably end up, you know, twisting or bending, you know, that those small joints there. And I'm glad um, that they did make these shoulder pieces detachable. So they're, you know, designed that way for that purpose. Uh, going over to his shoulders, he does move his shoulders way past 90 degrees. Really good range of motion. 360 there. Uh, the shoulders are attached to a ball joint, uh, which are attached to a fantastic butterfly joint. Again, if you move it, you know, all the way out to the front like that, you get this, you know, horrible gap there. But uh, again, you know, look at the way his arms go across his chest. I don't know any Dragon Ball SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball figure that can do that. You know, so that's really really fantastic articulation right there going over to his arms again he does have upper bicep swivel uh, he's got double jointed elbows which is fantastic look at that really good uh, he does have wrist swivels and hinges as well so where this figure really shines in terms of articulation is in the ab crunch look at this ab crunch look at how far he goes that's almost 90 degrees right there it, that ab crunch puts most spider-man figures to shame yes he does have this huge gap at the back there but uh really impressive ab crunch right there he does bend back not as far as he goes forward but uh still pretty impressive you do get some ooh really squeaky uh I don't like that sound and off goes his shoulder pads. I'm going to leave it there. But uh, I'm going to probably try to heat that up. Get that a little bit looser. It is really tight. But he does get uh, some side to side swivel um, in his upper torso. He does, of course, get, again, very squeaky waist swivel there as well. Uh, not too much tilt left and right. But uh, still very good range there at the abs. And at the waist as well. Moving on to the leg articulation, Ginyu does get a squeaky, perfect front and back splits. Those side skirt pads here do get out of the way, so you're not going to have any problem there. Um, he does have, he almost gets a perfect side split. Oh, hold on. If I get that his left leg into his crotch piece there. Yes, almost a perfect side split. Fantastic. He does have upper thigh swivel. Double jointed knees. Swivels at the ankle. 
toe articulation, really good toe articulation, and of course he does have some decent ankle pivot as well. And again, as I mentioned, you know, he just, you know, hits all the points, hits all those poses, all the articulation you would need um, for a Ginyu figure. Just really, really impressive engineering there by Tamashi. Really well done. Ginyu comes with pretty much almost everything you would need to recreate your favorite scenes or poses. It was announced that Jace will come with the evil Goku Scouter head and Ginyu Frog was hinted to come with a future Namek arc release as an accessory, Bulma perhaps. So with the accessories we do get four beautifully detailed heads, three of which require the Scouter accessory and only one of the heads with both ears. For hands, Ginyu comes with a set of fists, pointing hands, open palms, salute hands, and a pair of hands to hold the all-important four-star Namekian Dragon Ball. And what a gorgeous looking Dragon Ball it is. I'm not sure how well it's showing up on camera right now, but you can see right through the ball and the image that it reflects is actually a minimized flipped image, which is a pretty neat little feature. Figure Arts has also given us a battle damage chest plate to recreate his swap with Goku scene from the animation and manga. You'll need to get your fingernails uh, right in there and pry it out. And after removing the normal chest plate, it's as easy as lining up the peg holes and the pegs and snapping the battle damage chest plate on. Kind of reminds me of an old Robocop figure I used to have as a kid. I've already talked about how much I enjoy this figure despite not having any significant attachment to the actual character. So I kind of want to talk more about what characters like Ginyu being made will mean for the future of this line. Tamashi has already announced that they will be releasing the rest of the Ginyu Force, Gildo being uh, an accessory for one of the members, uh, most likely Birdo or Raccoon, uh, which makes four of the Dragon Balls. Um, in a live stream from Tamashi's Akihabara event two weeks ago, it was announced that they would complete all seven Dragon, all seven Namekian Dragon Balls uh, with seven different figures. Uh, the Ginyu Force holding four of the seven, Gohan making that five. First form Freezer was officially announced yesterday, which, me which makes him number six. And on the same panel uh, yesterday, it was speculated that Bulma would possibly be the last character in the Namekian arc, in the Namek arc, to complete the seven Namekian Dragon Balls. Uh, this would make sense as she would be the perfect character to come with the Ginyu Frog. So what I'm trying to get at is that it's a fantastic time to be collecting Dragon Ball figure arts. I don't agree with Tamashi's distribution and marketing decisions, but they are really going all out with characters I didn't think I would ever see, say two or three years ago. I really do applaud Tamashi for upping their game in the design and engineering department. I'm extremely happy with the upcoming roster of characters they have in the works. Now, if only they would, you know, get distribution right, I would say this would be a golden age for the series. Thank you all once again. I hope you enjoyed some aspect of the video. As always, you guys are the best. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll be seeing you all very soon. Yoroshiku.